There's a bit of a rarity. This is the Austin badge version of the Morris Minor pickup, immaculately restored. And here's another rarity. This is a Ford Console Capri, but this is a Hooper modified example with a posher interior. A very rare car, 1964. A glorious Alpine, about 1971, I would guess. Welcome to All Classic Car and today we are at sunny Capesthorne Hall in Cheshire for the third and final classic car show of the year at this particular venue. Cars are pouring in as we speak, it's about 10 o'clock so just about opening to the public now. Let's go and have a look at the uh, Mercedes Club stand over here. We've got various Mercedes old and new here, we've got a lovely Pagoda SL left hand drive. Wonderful 220S. <laughs> what a gorgeous car. <laughs> the backdrop isn't bad as well. We've got a 124 Estate. I think this is the S124, the saloons with the W124, we've had four of these over the years. I do like these saloons. Got a 107 SL. Yeah. Pair of W123s. This is an E500, quite a rare V8, bigger arches, quite a subtle Q car. One of the 126 series SECs. A fair few modern examples. A very clean 190E. Lots of SLs. Right, let's go and find some older cars. Right, over to the main show area. We've got a Suzuki Cappuccino. Very nice Triumph Herald 1360. Very smart, and that's joined by a Mini Clubman. Mark IV Spitfire. That's no, a 1500. Quite a Swish DB5. Stunning car. That. Dum -de -dum. TVR Chimera. This is on a local classic car club stand. MGC Roadster. Very smart. The rubber bumper MGB. Capri 1600 GT. Well, it's getting pretty busy now. It wouldn't be possible to look at every single car that's here. There are hundreds, but I'll just have a quick look at some of the more interesting ones that I can see. Next is XK120 Drop Air Coupe. We've got a vintage Rolls Royce. On the back here it says 1929 Rolls Royce 2025. 
It's a handsome machine if ever I've seen one. The Carmen B uh, VW convertible. Got a TR here, we've got a TR5. Very nice indeed. The Rover P6, this is a 3500S. The S signifies it's the manual gearbox version, most of them are autos, but a few S's were made, and that's what that is there. And that's an L red, so 1973. And alongside that, we've got a Studebaker. I saw this driving in earlier. Fantastic looking car. Like I said, there's so many classic cars here today at the Cape Thorn Hall Classic Car Show. We couldn't hope to look at everything, but we'll just have a bit of a look at a sample of them. Various motorcycles over there. And hopefully it'll give a flavour of the show and the cars that turned up today. <laughs> Alongside this immaculate Morris Minor Traveller. Got an Austin A40 Somerset, a rare one with a steel sliding sunroof. I used to have one of these, back wheel came off once, that's my abiding memory of the Somerset that I used to have. The immaculate Stag. Riley RM. This is an RME from 1953. We've got a TR3A. And over here is a wonderful late vintage Humber Saloon. I do like this. Note the V windscreen. Four piece glass. Not too many vintage cars here, so uh, it's nice to see the money do turn up. Let's have a look at the interior. Not sure if the camera's picking up the headline in the roof lining, the trim. Alongside that wonderful old Humber, we've got an Austin 7 Special. Bentley, Mark 6 I think. And here we've got a 1952 Volkswagen Beetle with the split oval rear window. rare car this was used by the British military in or well, from 1952 onwards <laughs> <laughs> immaculate two-door Morris Minor 1000 this is for sale if you fancy your own classic car Marcos.
Next up, MGTD, early to mid 1950s. The Ford Cortina Mark I four door saloon. And here's just an example of one of the cars that used to be everywhere at one time the Austin Cambridge, the Austin A60 Cambridge. This is a 1966 car. Complete with period driving gloves on the radio on the uh, dashboard, seat covers. And a pair of big heelys. This is a car I've never seen before. This is an Austin 12.4 Tora, or an Austin Light 12.4, and the Tora body was by Martin Walters of Kent, people who did the Bedford CA Utilicons and so on. This is a very handsome machine. Alongside that we've got a Rover 100, the P4, but I wanted to have a closer look at what's next to it. This is an Austin A35 pickup, only 487 made. It's not often I've seen one of these. How it comes to like this? Is that a Mark 1 Corty? It's a very rare survivor, very few of them were made because very few people bought them. The vans were way more popular. As such, this is extremely unusual to see now. It's very hard to choose the cars to actually feature because uh, there's a gorgeous Falcon Caribbean. This was based on Ford Pop running gear, Ballamy wheels and suspension. And next to it, another classic Ford, but this time a Ford Zephyr 6 Mark 1. I've not seen this car before at any of the local shows. So this is a bit of a treat. It reminds me very much of back when I was a kid in the 1970s. The neighbour used to have a Mark 1 Ford console and every couple of years he'd repaint it, brush paint it white. And it's exactly the same shape as this. But obviously not the six cylinder car, but this is absolutely glorious. aftermarket portholes on the wing, very much like a Buick thing of the 1950s, period sun visor. Such a rare car now. The Austin Healy Sprite, Mark 1 of course, Frog Eye. A series engine tucked away under there. And the Mark II Ford console. All very rock and roll. How immaculate is that? If you've got a favourite of the, the vintage and the classic cars that are featured in this particular video, please pop a note into the comments and say hello and let us know what you think of the cars that are on show. We've got an MGA Roadster. And here's another little treat that I spotted earlier on when we had a first quick look round. A Sunbeam Rapier, three position drop head, coupe, cabriolet. Very unusual car indeed that is, obviously based on the Hillman Minx, this was like an upmarket Hillman Minx. I've got him in the garage, but I'll put SUs on it. <coughs> I prefer SUs. Quite a sporty little car of the 50s. Yeah. 
here, one of the oldest cars here, this is a Bullnose Morris. This is a Bullnose Morris Cowley from the 1920s. Look at the hole. <laughs> Bullnose, of course, was the unofficial name for it because of the shape of the radiator cowl, nickel plated. The later ones had the flat nose. Uh, just to sort of modernise things towards the end of the 1920s, but this is sort of mid 20s and it still had the, the very attractive bull nose front. That's the Boyce motor meter, the temperature gauge on the top there. This is actually 1923, the information sheet says, that's quite handy. Beautiful car, as is this Austin 7 Ruby, which is alongside it. Probably around 1935 or 1936. Something a little Gallic now, a 1964 Citroen 2 CV. It's not nice, the earlier ones didn't have the extra window in the rear quarters. Yeah, Elvis. This is a TA fourteen from nineteen forty eight. And at the end of this row we've got a Sunbeam Alpine, really nice. Apologies for the noise, it's a combination of wind and a rattly Land Rover diesel, but we've got an MGTC here and there's a couple of nice things on this particular car. If we go around the back, I particularly like this old GB plaque with the RAC emblem actually moulded into it. And this MG exhaust extension. Back in the 1950s you could buy all types of uh, exhaust extension tips and so on. And this one's actually got the MG logo moulded into it, which is quite unusual. I've not seen that before. The mighty Bristol. I'll double check what actual model of Bristol that is. I'm not too well up on those. It's S registration, so I'll look that up when I get back home. Pontiac Trans Am 1978 and a Riley 1.5. It's B series engine, twin car rotors. That's the main difference between this and the Wolseley 1500. Both had the 1500cc engine, but only one of them, the Riley, had the twin carbs and a slightly better equipped dashboard, if I remember right. Well, you only had the Sunbeam Tiger as well. That's a Minter. Next to that, we've got a wonderful Vauxhall Victor FB Estate. I do like that a lot. MGB TR4 Bright red Morris Minor and a pale green MGA a Vauxhall VX490 
said, you know this, you've been in one of the flops. Yeah. Moggy Thousand MGB GT V8, the old Rover three and a half litre V8. And here's one you can buy. It's a 1950 Ford Pilot, a V8 Pilot. Absolutely stunning car. Do we have any takers? French Marshall lamps on this one. It's probably one of my favourites so far. These had the American flathead side of our V8 engine in them. Oh, no, well, this is 1950. Big brother to the Prefect in many ways, very similar grille. Here's another rarity, this is a Ford Console Capri, but this is a Hooper modified example with a posher interior. A very rare car, 1964. There's an information sheet here so you can pause this and have a look at it. Very swish. Very smart VW. There's a bit of a rarity. This is the Austin badge version of the Morris Minor pickup. Immaculately restored. Either six or eight hundred weight rated these were, depending on which one you chose to buy. This is 1972, so one of the last. Absolutely immaculate example. The wavy Austin grill rather than the Morris's straight slats. Let's see what else we've got. A Metro Turbo. Modern classic, very rare. I think down there there's a Morris Minor van, let's go and have a look at that. Yeah, not only is it a Morris Minor van, or a 6 800 weight van, this is a split window example. Just about see it there. Complete with period sun visor. And again, really nicely restored. Obviously it's got the Morris grille. This would be a 1950s van. We've got two classic vans for the price of one. This is a Thames 508 307E. Because these were based on the Ford Anglia. We've got a Morris Minor, pre war Minor. TR2 1954, TR6 and the Subaru. Wow, shiny. You don't see many of these. This is a DAF 55 from 1972. Alongside this Mark 1 MR2, we've got a fantastic Zodiac Mark 3 Estate. Well, there's a practical classic if ever I've seen one. Gargantuan vehicle. Huge load area, huge tailgate to get at it.
Got a very early Lotus Cortina, a console badged Lotus Cortina Mark 1. Alongside that is a Volvo 164, a car that I'm quite familiar with at the moment. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know why. This is the carburetted version. So a couple of big Strombergs. There's mine's fuel injected around here and a myriad of pipes and complicated things. This is a relatively straightforward twin, S, uh, twin Stromberg carburetor setup. Probably all the better for it, if I'm honest. Sierra three door. You don't see those too often now. And the Mark One Capri, a three litre Capri, no less. Real beauty, fantastic condition. And then we've got a twelve seven five GT Mini. Mark 1 Escort RS2000 Alongside that we've got a Mark 2 Escort 1600 Sport And here we've got a pre-war Armstrong Sidley This must have been a late arrival We didn't see this when we walked around before What a Bobby Dazzler that is Spare wheel on the running board, enclosed, usually a sign of a quality car. It's got a 1938 tax disc. Lovely dash. Well, as you say, I've never seen one of those before. What is it, a 12 or a 14 perhaps? I'll have a look at the registration later and just see if there's any information I can find. Nissans. Oh, for all you boy racers out there, Nova GTE. And a pair of MGs, one an MGB Roadster, and the other an MGB GT V8. Wind's getting up a little bit, and not just mine. This is an Opel Ascona A type. In the early 70s, 1972. This isn't going well with my long hair. There you go, just in case you wonder whether it was windy or not. Got an E36, a Lotus Elise, Rover 2200TC. And possibly the world's most immaculate Triumph Vitesse. The Test Mark II, so that would have the Rotor Flex rear suspension on it, the 2 litre straight 6. <laughs> Glorious Alpine, about 1971, I would guess. Yeah. 
and the viewers on the channel are keen on a spot of classic van, light commercial, etc. And here we've got a wonderful F registration Bedford HA van. Yeah. Again, like so many cars here, one time you'd see these all over the place and then they just disappeared, rotted away, broken for spares. I mean, the, those that remain are just so unusual now and quite sought after. Let's keep on going, plenty more classic cars still to look at. Various 80s, 90s cars, of course. Golf. And this is a Mark II Cortina with a difference. This is a Mark II Cortina Savage with a V6 in there. Bit of a Q car. Here's the all important badge. Got a Mark III GT6, a Rolls Royce Silver Spirit, a Morris Traveller, a yellow MGA, the rubber bumper MG Midget, the 1500cc car. So that shared its engine with the Triumph Spitfire 1500 of the same era. It's a really nice Mark 1 Escort Super, a Ford Escort Mark 1 that hasn't been converted into a rally car. Fantastic. Alongside that is the Gilburn GT. Just an A40 Farina backlight, also used on the late Wolseley 1500s. Let's have a peek inside. For many years, Gilburn were the only cars ever made in Wales. I think in theory TVR is setting up a plant there, but will it ever happen? I don't know. Bit of Austin Rover goodness here. Montego, Montego and the Maestro. Robo and Prem GB GT in a very lurid, limey yellow colour, just the kind of colour that you'd expect to see on a 1970s car. Looks very original, most of the paint on the here looks, if not original, certainly it's been there a while. It's nice to see one that's just not red or white, you know, it's actually one of the original colours and probably quite a bit rarer than most MGB GTs uh, because of that. A bright yellow Triumph Stag, the Mark II Ford Console, 262 UPC. Like I say, if, uh, if you can add any information on the history of the particular car shown here, or if I've got one of your cars in the video, please pop a note and say hello in the comments. The next military Land Rover, I'm guessing 24 volt, and a Land Crab, an Austin 1800. Yeah, the camera horizon. Yeah. You very rarely see those nowadays, lots of old literature in the window. That's quite well though, you've done that, you know that have you had that made up? We've got an early Saab 99L now. This is what registration is that? NREG. A fantastic shade of green. I remember Saabs often turned up in this colour. Saab 96s as well, but this is a 99. Left hand drive as well. A 
remember my uncle had a bright yellow one of these back in the day at the same time as dad having a Saab turbo and my uncle decided that his basic 99L with 1709 cc four cylinder car uh, wasn't really up to snuff so he managed to shoehorn a Dolomite Sprint engine under the bonnet and the only problem is because the bonnet drops down quite a lot on the 99 it sort of slopes down quite a lot he had to cut a hole somewhere in the bonnet for one of the carburetors to clear so he never got around to putting like a power bulge on it so it always had one carburetor sticking up through the bonnet which looked a bit strange Sadly that car is no longer around. Before he sold it, he put the original engine back in and filled the hole up on the bonnet and sold it to a friend of his whose daughter wanted a car to learn to drive on. So unfortunately that Saab 99 Sprint is no longer around. It was certainly an interesting car. It used to have huge tyres on the front and it regularly used to smoke them away from traffic lights. It was quite, quite a spirited performer, I think. I don't think he did anything to the gearing, so it may have been a bit low geared which probably gave it great acceleration, but top speed was probably a bit limited. It was certainly an interesting car, as is this, this left-hand drive Saab 99. All right, classic van fans who haven't been forgotten. It's windy down here. This is a Renault Estafette 800. What a fantastic vehicle. This one looks like it's used as sort of a camper stroke minibus. Many of those few that you do tend to see around have been converted into catering vans, but fortunately this one appears to have escaped that fate. Let's have a look inside. Lovely and original in here. Hope I'm not disturbing anyone. That's fantastic, I like that. So what do you reckon? Hey. Really nice. I like the oily rag. It's not like really shiny. No, it's mostly original. It's mostly original paint, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mostly original paint. Fantastic. Most commercial vehicles in front have to have various items of specification, tyre pressures and stuff on the side. Now I assume that's part of what this is, also it's load rating. One of the fastback Sunbeam Rapiers. There used to be two of these at the last show. Yeah, there was a pair of them together, wasn't there? Pillarless coupe design. Wind down the back window and the pillar goes with it. Quite a sporty number. Weren't those rear lights shared with the Hillman Hunter and Hillman Minx estate? I've got a feeling they may have been. Ford Cortina Mark III M registration. Very smart Mark II Golf GTI. Big bumper car. Round arch MG Midget. And this spree. Somehow you don't seem to see as many Mark II Jaguars at shows as you used to. One time there'd be five or six of these at a classic car show, but I think this is the only one that's here. No, there are a couple of them. 
Huh? So I've seen two other ones, I think. Have you? But yeah, still not that many, and this is a massive ship. And this is a 3.8, top of the tree. 2 cars ever symbolise the huge variation of cars that appear in the classic car world, we've got them here. Here's a Hillman Avenger, slightly modified. And alongside is a fantastic Cadillac, early 1960s. This is car classic and your car tracks. Not sure what year this is, early 1960s. But what a fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> I remember years ago when I was at school in the 1980s, a school teacher used to have a pink Cadillac, he used to turn up in it quite regularly, but it was a bit later than this. It was about 1969 or 70, his car, but this one is early 60s, I'm not quite sure what year it is, but good grief. You get more out of it doing it yourself. That's why my fellow likes to do it. Cadillac Fleetwood. <laughs> Next up a glorious Mark III Ford Zodiac. Mark III version of course had the fins. The devil is in the detail. Alongside the Zodiac, we've got a glorious Rover 3.5 litre, the P5B Coupe. Still a four door coupe, but with a low roof line compared to the saloon. Here we've got a very nice 5 series BMW, E28 series, I'm not quite sure what size this one is, they did them from the 518 all the way up to the M5. I think it was a 525 I saw it. Is it? Right, so it'll be a straight 6, yeah you won't have a look. Yeah, so it's 525. 525, right, so it's a 2.5 litre straight 6. Had a couple of these back in the day. One of them was a 535i, and that used to go like a rocket. But very few of them survive like this. They do tend to go a bit rusty underneath where you don't see it. Uh, one of the late XJSs. Good ones of these are getting few and far between now. Future classic, if ever there was one, the Ford Ka disappearing rapidly, they rot out very badly at the back of the sills here, so survivors are getting few and far between and less every month as they fail MOTs and get scrapped. And it won't be long before these are a rare sight. Um, they did the sport car. Um, well, this is just a basic basic example with the grey bumpers, later ones had the body coloured bumpers on them, but they're getting thin on the ground. This is an 04 car. Future classic, definitely. We had a look at a 5 Series, a 525, which was over there somewhere, and this is the 635 CSI BMW. 3.5 litre straight six. These came out in the late 1970s and were sold alongside the E23 7 Series. Crucial downforce. Yes, boot spoiler, original fitment, I think, on the 635. Look at these. Yes, they're huge, aren't they? I do like these. That's the 1980s, we've got a Ford Orion and a Fiesta Mark II. 
lovely little Mini from the early 1970s, a Mark III Mini. You can tell it's a Mark III because it hasn't got the external, external uh, hinges and of course the windows are wind up. And the Mark III's have this double gutter. When the Mark IV and the Mark V's came along they didn't have this double gutter arrangement. A couple of beamers leaving or going off to the display area. Alpina. The E46 and there's an Alpina E46 up there. It's slippery. And that's handy because it means we can get a proper look at this Austin Allegro. A beautiful bronze example, T registration. Well, remember these in the local British Lane and Garage, Reeds of Cheadle when I was a kid. Great, that's it. Still plenty of classic cars to go, and here we've got an SE5 Scimitar, the GTE. Three litre Ford V6 engine. Very practical car, more or less an estate car, fiberglass body, steel chassis. If you're after an everyday classic, you could do a lot worse than one of these. Just sort out all the earthing points in the wiring because on a fiberglass car they can always be a bit problematic. And then this is not just another V8 Rover P6, this is a Rover P6 Estate. And this conversion was one of several undertaken by a company called FLM Panelcraft, if I remember correctly, back in the 1970s when these cars were new. And it just makes it quite a, quite a lot more practical indeed quite a low roof line so you wouldn't get the huge wardrobe in there but it makes it a lot more practical than the standard Rover P6 saloon